I don't want to pick on Roberto, but I see that he's here. Uh, so I uh, want to, if Roberto, if you're able, uh, you've been listening patiently. I know you're in the middle of all this, the Secretary General of the OSC Parliamentary Assembly. Uh, they today also did a major event, I know. And uh, I just, uh, Roberto, you're, you're really in all of this. What do you make of this? What's the future? Because it's your job on the line. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Dan, and thank you to the Wilson Center. Uh, in a conversation which features uh, my current boss, George Seratelli, and my former boss and mentor, Spencer Oliver, everything would call for me to sit in a religious silence and take notes and listen. But as you call on me to say a few words, I will take It's a private notes. event. You're free to speak. Thank you very much. With uh, George uh, Zeratelli and Spencer Oliver's permission, again, I said I should only sit in religious silence and uh, learn. But um, uh, you, you're giving me the opportunity to say that uh, I think uh, this conversation, the informality of it, allows me to say that what Spencer just mentioned, the, the, criticism, the, the, the critical issues that are in the organization, is very much on target. Indeed, Spencer uh, mentioned the fact that uh, there is a difficulty with the uh, misuse of the consensus rule in the organization, especially when you come to the uh, issues of uh, appointment of leadership of the organization administrative decisions. Uh, since uh, I have uh, been Secretary General, I must say uh, I have uh, encountered two leadership crises. In 2017, uh, during our annual session in Minsk, I had four empty chairs. Uh, witnessing the fact that the organization could not find consensus on uh, the leadership of the organization. And now again, since uh, July 17, we do not have leaders in the four main uh, top jobs of the organization. Uh, when I uh, was confronted with this uh, second leadership crisis, I thought, what can the uh, OSC Parliamentary Assembly do? Uh, I think uh, the OSC Parliamentary Assembly has learned uh, from Spencer and from other leaders in the past that one of the challenges of this organization is the lack of political attention. I think, and I've been privileged, uh, thanks to uh, Spencer taking me to many ministerial councils before, to talk to ministers uh, during the ministerial meeting. And I've noticed in the ministers sometimes a lack of uh, understanding of where they were. You know, normally the ministerial meeting of the OSC takes place in between a, a NATO summit and the following week there is a EU council meeting so you would have their ministers who come to the OSC meeting, read the statement prepared by the ambassadors, and then engage in bilateral meetings that have very little to do with the uh, matters that are dealt with within the OSC. And therefore, the OSC game, let's say, is very much left onto those who are in Vienna, the ambassadors, uh, some capitals, but there is very little attention from the political leadership. And I thought, the Parliamentary Assembly who has a plethora of uh, 323 members of parliament who are political leaders in their countries, they have influence in their own national assemblies and in their leadership, they should get engaged and they should step up, especially in this moment when there is a lack of leadership in the OSC. Uh, and uh, uh, that's what we did since uh, the uh, um, OSC uh, leadership crisis. Our members have started to be speaking up more, uh, have been uh, trying to engage their ministers. And I think we've done a great job in um, getting our members to engage on all the dossiers of the OSC. We couldn't have our annual session this year. We couldn't have our uh, uh, normal fora where uh, the parliamentarians engage on, on the three dimensions of the OSC, but we did a series of parliamentary dialogues on all the issues that are now very much at the center of this pandemic crisis. And uh, all of these resulted into a contribution that we have distributed to the ministers. But what we want to do with this operation, I called it uh, Operation Lazarus. Uh, the uh, former Secretary General Spencer Oliver mentioned the manifesto. It's a more a, a call for action for uh, you know, a common endeavor of all the OSC family. I call this an Operation Lazarus uh, from the idea that you know, something is uh, not so reinvigorated and needs to be reinvigorated. And what we want to do is to engage and, uh, uh, and get the attention of ministers on what they signed on many years ago. Spencer said that uh, none of the things that we are now having at the IKEA of the OSC would be uh, uh, agreed upon right now, given the current geopolitical situation. So what we want to do is exactly that, go back to the roots of the organization 
and speak at the highest level, trying to get the attention of ministers on what are the values of this organization. And as somebody who uh, has worked in the field, uh, has worked at the very grassroots uh, in the organization, I worked in the Balkans in the 90s, I have seen with my own eyes the benefits uh, that this organization actually delivers on the ground. I've seen many people who have uh, um, enjoyed uh, the work of the OSC missions in institution building, in conflict prevention, in uh, reform of law enforcement, in reform of the judiciary. So this organization does a lot of good work, but nobody knows about it. And so what we need to do is to keep on doing this good work. Uh, probably a lot of it is done in silence but also called the attention of the ministers. And that's what we try to do with this manifesto. And I think our president uh, will present this manifesto to the ministers at the Ministerial Council meeting on the 3rd of December. And there we will start a series of conversations in the different areas of the OSC portfolio. And I hope to engage many of you, of course, uh, Spencer Oliver and others in this call to, to keep on talking about the organization and strengthening the organization. Thank you very much and sorry for being too long. That's okay.